Yo, what is going on everybody? It is Prem here and welcome back to day 39 of growth every day. One day away from day 40 guys. Today we got our pull day, chin up slap pull downs and instead of doing my RDLs, decided to do some Nordic hamstring curls because I realized I haven't been doing much hip flexion movements. So I just decided to throw those, throw those in there today. So four sets of eight, since there's isolation, I decided to do four. And since it's isolation, not really, I mean, nothing's really truly isolation if you're not like locked into a machine. And even then there's probably some stabilizers working. Um, but isolation in the sense of I'm really only working like hip flexion and like no other movement pattern. Um, so yeah, decided to do two, four sets with only two minutes rest in between. Um, but yeah, guys, today I made some progress on my chin up, so I still stuck to six four four. But I'm really close to that fifth rep on the second set, and instead of doing twelve on each stack for these lat pull downs, as you can see, I did thirteen on each stack. And I'm kind of proud of myself, guys, because that's almost the full stack. The only stack only goes up to fifteen. I'm kind of repping it out after I'm doing a set of chin ups to failure. So like, come on, like you see me, like I'm strong like that. I'm just kidding. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, guys, just today's just going to be a check-in video. I really don't have anything to talk about. Um, I might even end the voiceover a little bit before the video ends. But, yeah, guys, just chilling with the growth every day, honestly. I might go in the pool right now. It's nice outside. And honestly, like, the, the cold water just feels so nice on your muscles after you're done. I've heard, like, contradicting things about ice bats after a workout and how it can, like, stunt gains and this and that. But, honestly, guys, don't let that deter you from taking your, your ice bats. I mean, I guess if you can take it before your workouts but like i said i'm not entirely sure how this works and if it really does like stop the adaptation process or kind of like stunt the adaptation process you know like cut it short prematurely um so yeah i'm not entirely sure how that works so maybe look into that first before you make a decision and don't just listen to me who has no idea what he's talking about when it comes to ice bats i honestly don't take ice bats so again that makes me even less qualified to be giving advice about this stuff but it's just something I've heard, and maybe it's something you want to look into. I've heard that you should take the ice bath a couple hours before your workout or when you wake up and then work out after, like pretty much just work out after an ice bath. But like I said, I don't think, and this is just me speculating again, I don't think that an ice bath after a workout is going to have like crazy, like, oh my God, like you're going to get no gains. I really don't think it's going to be like that, guys. There's plenty of people, athletes even, that take ice baths after a workout and they perform plenty well so don't worry about it don't worry about things like that honestly just look into them and be educated i need to educate myself obviously um but yeah little tangent like i said i don't really have anything to talk about today so we're just going to go down the rabbit hole of where this takes us so these nordics are looking pretty good last time so i used to be able to do nordics like almost all the way down on the eccentric obviously i'm nowhere close to that anymore but i am like 40 pounds heavier so I'm feeling pretty good about these. I got a great, great hamstring work on these. I mean, they felt fantastic. I mean, absolutely fantastic. I could feel my hamstrings working. I was trying to hold like, like as you can see, I'm kind of like holding like a little bit of a lower position, you know, as low as I can go and hold it. It's not very low, but you know, it's as low as I can go at this point in time. And that really is killer for the hamstrings. And I feel great with those because, you know, hip flexion is another pretty important movement when it comes to sprinting, right? Like you need it when you are, I forget what the phase is called, but when you're, you know, going into hip extension and you really explosively have to hip flex to bring the foot back in front of you. Like you hip flex, sorry, not hip flex, you, you knee flex, I, I apologize. You knee flex, bring the leg behind you and then hip flex really fast and then knee extend. And now your foot's back out in front of you. It's a really, really important part of sprinting mechanics. So yeah that's pretty much it guys honestly i don't have anything else to say so i'm just gonna leave it off here please like comment share subscribe leave any feedback you have down in the comment section below i appreciate every single one of you for tuning in for another episode of growth every day but this has been prime here guys and i am signing off later